All right, FPV B1 RD. Let's check out your 32K Betaflight 3.3.1 logs. Okay, so the first log you sent me, uh, first thing I noticed it was that the sampling rate was one kilohertz because then you were getting in your spectrum analyzer only up to 500 hertz. Um, my opinion is that with, you know, when you're doing 32K sampling and 16K PID loop, which you have down here, that thir uh, one kilohertz sample rate is not high enough that you really need to get up to, I would say eight would be my preference, uh, eight kilohertz sampling rate that would give you a four kilohertz uh, window to see into. Uh, four kilohertz, uh, I think would be acceptable as well, but I really wouldn't go below that. Uh, looking at your log uh, at the one kilohertz, it looked, you know, we're looking at the gyro notch on the roll and the pitch. So this is the raw noise that is scaled. And it looked like there was barely no noise. It was just a low bass noise level. It was looking really good. Now, this was just a, a small hover, a couple little blimp punches, but nothing dramatic. So I asked you to run me some higher sample rate logs. You got those to me, and then all of a sudden now looking at your gyro notch on roll and then pitch, now we can see some actual noise. So we can see how that made a difference, that sampling rate being higher. Uh, now we're at a sampling rate of, uh, eight, so it was an eight kilohertz sampling rate, so now you have four kilohertz uh, window here you can see up to. Now we can actually see some noise. Now, one thing that, my next thing that I looked at right away, I'm using the Betaflight Black Box Explorer, the actual release of the 3.0.0 release of Black Box Explorer, and this motor noise seemed awfully high. There's some bugs, I guess, in the Black Box Explorer. So whenever you see high motor noise like that, anything of you know, eight, you know, like I said here, it's 800 hertz. Uh, you're up to 1,200 uh, hertz in this area. For a couple peaks, I'm always suspicious of that, so I always go back to my tried and true black box explorer that I've used before, which is the clean flight version of it. Uh, now I have one that's a while back. So anybody looking on this, if you haven't some high motor noise, I believe it was introduced um, because the Beta Flight Black Box Explorer has gone through some changes before its final release to be basically compatible with Beta Flight 3.4, which isn't released yet. So in 3.3.1 and 3.3.0 logs, I think sometimes, I haven't put my finger on it, but sometimes the, uh, when you run the spectrum analyzer, it's giving you results that aren't right. They're twice what it should be. So just be cautious of that. You can always uh, message me or whatever you need, want some help on that. I have a bunch of uh, black box explorer versions I keep. I don't get rid of the old one until I'm acquainted with the new one. Anyways, getting back to this looked like you have two peaks on here uh, run around 400 Hertz and another around 600 now the 400 Hertz one should be able to be tamped down by the dynamic notch but the 630 Hertz that is outside the dynamic rock range if you haven't checked out that video I'll make a link in the upper right hand corner Bing and check that out and you can see that the um, dynamic notch only goes up to 500 Hertz so we're gonna need to tackle this peak with something else this one uh, should be handled by the dynamic notch which is enabled so going into your filter settings here we can see dynamic notch is enabled that's all good uh, you have PT1 filter at 100 Hertz both static notches are turned off you do have the D term notch turned on and then the PT1 on D term at 100 Hertz here as well so 100 and 100 on that coordinating with you since 3.3.1 does not record the stage 2 low pass filter setting which Betaflight 3.4 will, which will be nice uh, once everybody gets there, uh, that you have this at your stage two filter at 450 hertz. So that is there. So let's take a look at the filtered value. So you can see the, I usually crank this up a little bit. You can see the dynamic notch is whacking this 400 hertz down. The reason it's probably not doing a little bit better of a job is because there's a second peak here. And whenever you have two peaks, within the dynamic notch range. You know, it can only be one spot at one moment. So um, 
it has to pick and it flip, it's flipping back and forth and there's some lag in that so you know two peaks is troublesome there let's go and look at your roll axis sorry that was the roll axis looking at your pitch axis it's it's kind of more of the same okay so we can browse down through here down in our p term and then d term to see how this noise is washing through the PID loop itself. So let's first take a look at your P on the roll and you can see we have the three peaks on the pitch, three peaks again but a little bit more intense and then D it's going to be even more intense on both of those you can see in the roll and then the pitch. So this spike I really would like to get taken care of. You can see on the D term we don't even have it turned all the way up that you know we definitely have a big spike there we have a big spike here as well and then we have this lower amplitude bass noise here it would be nice to tackle that a little bit more this D term uh, notch filter I believe is just on by default and you just haven't turned that off yet so we're gonna address that and then we have this smaller peak down here that's in, in the lower Hertz range so let's go over to my fancy dancy uh, calc sheet here and I have this plugged in for what your filtering is now so you have the stage 1 at 100 stage or the D term at 100 stage 2 at 450 dynamic notch I'm guessing is centered around 400 just because we looked at that peak before so that's just a guesstimate of where that's at because it's of course dynamic so it does move around and some of the things I was looking at well first were let's set a, a notch filter let's set a static notch filter right over top of this peak which is here so I would set it to 630 just to round it off and then I usually go 100 hertz breadth and so it's 200 total so I go down to 530 so you can see if I take that down to 530 you can't get it exactly but 530 would put the cutoff here and the notch so on and so forth so you'd see you'd you know have this nice notch cutting this down um, hopefully uh, for your D term uh, most importantly the next thing I would do is going back to here so I would turn that on is instead of having this at 450 I would set this at 350 now I know the latency is going up but we're you know because you're 32k sampling here you have an inherently low latency to begin with because really the digital low pass filter 32k sampling is pushed up to 3000 Hertz which it to me is the whole benefit of 32k sampling period it has nothing to do with how many samples it's taking because that's nanoseconds versus these are milliseconds when we're talking about this delay so it's really it's all about that digital low pass filter but anyways that's pushed up which gives you a really low latency there so you have some room so anyways, moving that down to 350, why am I saying that? Well, there's a couple reasons. It will help on two things. This peak noise, it will help with if we run that down to around 350. So that peak is around 400. So if we're around 350 with this, that sets this cutoff here, which will then attenuate, help attenuate this noise. In addition, moving this down 100 will also help attenuate this noise out here a little bit further as well which definitely can't hurt. Going back over to there, those are the two changes I would make for now and obviously the big change, so we went from 4.5 now up to 4.7 in total um, calculated latency here for a general gist of where things were now that where they are now and if I would turn off this D term notch filter bam now we're down to 4.3 so it's an overall latency reduction and I think you'll get some better filtering for your specific setup looking at this specific log now I would set that up fly that fly a little bit bigger of a, a course track you know a lot longer flight this is not a super long this is kind of a hover with a couple punches it's only 43 seconds long so fly a couple of minutes see what you get relook at those logs and see if there's a further tweak hopefully me going through this the way I did you can kind of get at least how I think about it when I look at some stuff. Now we did not address this lower peak and I would leave that for now to see if that persists with longer flights. I hate to try to address that and this is why. The only thing to really do with that is either move your low pass, this uh, stage one low pass filter down which is not going to really help with that peak that much because it's already attacking it. This is at 100, that peaks around 200. 
So the only other way to do that is to really do another static notch. I mean, the dynamic notch, it's already within its range and it's you know not getting it because of the two peaks within that dynamic notch range. So you could turn on a static notch two to cover that, but you can see, um, I should back up here a second, we're at you know 4.3 and doing that for now, boom, go to 5.1. So it adds a ton of latency because I would set the cutoff from 200 to 100. Now you can you could bump this up to 150 and get down to 4.7. I don't know. I would just uh, personally for now I'd leave it, you know, you know, get some more logs, maybe look at that again, but like I said, right now I would just I would kind of let just let that go. One thing to consider is flashing up to beta point 3.4. It's an unstable release, um, but I've been flying it different builds of it for the last couple of months, and nothing's you know flown into my face. I just flashed up to seven point or build 793, I believe. I haven't flown it yet, but if you want, um, give me a ring or you know shoot me a message in the next couple of days and I'll let you know if it you know flew up into my face and killed me or anything like that uh, my experiences are you know they're not that unstable but you do have to play some caution I'll tell you when I first arm a new build I'm very cautious about it and uh, keep my finger on the disarm switch and all that jazz but the reason I bring it up is it has a two-stage um, D-term low pass filter so instead of right now you just have a single stage d-term low pass filter down at 100 hertz you could also set a second stage it's usually double so if you have 100 you set it at 200 or 150 300 and that's not a that's just a general rule of thumb it could be whatever but that might help attenuate some of this noise at least on the d-term if it's not whacked down so i would do these things first but something to consider if you're looking for a little bit more edge there's a lot of cool stuff in it you can also instead of just having a pt1 filter you can play with some other filters like these low passes or pt1 filters right now there's the fkf filter there's a butterworth filter there's a lag moving average filter in there that can help with some of this higher end noise as well i'm going to do some videos and all this stuff but um anyways it just gives a lot more uh options um you can explore it if you're into that kind of thing. And last but not least, just a quick run through the plasma tree PID analyzer just to see what that shows. It really has nothing to do with filtering, but it does look at the PIDs. Uh, what this is showing, again, this is a, just a quick hover, but it shows hey, maybe you could uh, use a little bit more eye term on your pitch access to bring this line up and be more around one like it is here for roll so i is good there uh your yaw is looking pretty good now i don't know if there's that many there's really not that many yaw moves in there but um yeah i without more of a flight uh, i wouldn't pay too much worry about uh, the pids but hey i have the stuff installed i usually just drop the logs in here and I'm trying to draw a little bit more attention to this plasma tree. It's, it's pretty neat for a uh, second look. What I really like to do is I look at the black box logs, kind of come up with my opinion on what I would do with the PIDs. Then I run the plasma tree, and I've been pleasantly surprised. It, it um, A lot of the things I was thinking, it kind of gives me a confidence that, hey, that's what that's showing too. Okay, I must not be too far off. And uh, So anyways, that's the results of your log is right there. Okay, well, that's it. I hope this helps uh, give you some direction and you know, feel free to message me again after you, you know, implemented this. Let me know if it did make things better. It looks like it's flying okay, that your motors are you know, just getting barely warm, so hopefully this cools them off a little bit. And then you can start getting in the PID tuning, which allows you to push that D up a little higher to get them warm again. But uh, anyways, um, you know, obviously with a higher D, you can address park wash and, and other things. Again, I hope this helps. Thanks for getting me your log, and then do let me know if things are better. Uh, a lot of people in these videos love to know if the suggestions were helpful or not, so that feedback is great. Thanks again. See ya. Oh, one thing I wanted to add, that D-term spike, I don't know if you saw my previous video about the D-term spikes that, were, that are in 3.3.0 uh, beta flight, 3.3.1 beta flight are real. It's not a manifestation of black box recording. They, in my experience and others, do heat up the motors some and are now fixed in the latest builds of 3.4. It will be in a maintenance release of 3.3.2, so if you want to stay on the stable releases, when that one comes out, do upgrade to that 
just copy your, just do a diff, you know, flash the firmware. I usually do a reset and then paste the diff in the new setup, hit save, and you're off to the races. But you definitely want to de get that. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll make a, it's in my, the very last video from this one. So just look one video prior and check it out. But again, those spikes are there and they are real. All right. See you again. Bye.